Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. good. I'm very happy that you gave me a good introduction because I saw in the program that it said that I was about to talk about talent management and networking. But in fact, I'm not talking about talent management. What I am talking about is uh, some ideas regarding how you can think to build and maintain your personal network. If you open a web newspaper today and search for personal networks, you will find lots of articles. And all of the articles you find, almost all of them, will be regarding what you can get from networks, what people get from networks. I have this idea, I have this very important thing I'd like to share with you with regards to network, and that is that networking is not about what you get, it's about what you give. That's the most important thing. Before we start off, I, 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 when I speak to, uh, to a group of people, I like to know, you, know who I'm talking to. Uh, so, my glasses are a bit shady, but I, I can see you. I'd like to ask you, could you please raise your hand if you're a student? Quite a few students here. And to see the opposite, could you please raise your hand if you're not a student? Okay. And how about the ones of you that are non-Norwegians? Raise your hand. Okay. And the next one, uh, who of you give money to beggars? If you meet a beggar on the street. Quite a few of you. Okay. And finally, by your own definition, if I ask you, are you a networker? Would you say that you are a networker? Raise your hand if so. Not that many, but some. Okay, in fact, the last question was a trick question. Because you are all networkers. You are all networkers. And I'm a networker. We can't help it. It's in our blood. It's in our genes. We are genetically programmed to network. If we look back one and a half million years. This is how it looked. Homo erectus. Homo erectus. Um, one and a half year ago, years ago, we wandered out of Africa. And during that time, we evolved. We evolved through <laughs> over one million years up until about 200,000 years ago, and then it stopped. And that's when Homo sapiens arrived. And that's the genes that we carry today. The genes, the genetical involvement, stopped 200,000 years ago. That's quite a, quite a while ago. That's about 70,000 generations. Actually, I tried to make a slide saying tip, 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 but it wasn't room for it. <laughs> because it's a very long time ago. Actually, 200,000 years ago, you had saber-toothed tigers. You had mammoths. And the genetic material that you had inherited to survive in such an environment, you had to survive with stone tools, you had to defend yourself from saber-toothed tigers with teeth that were like this long, 30 centimeters long, and you had to kill prey like mammoths four meters high, That's probably about almost up to the top of the screen, weighing eight tons with stone tools. You can't do that alone. <laughs> It's impossible. So we had to function as groups. We had to function as networks. And what's the definition of a network? A very simple definition of a network is that a network is a group of people, and that's the basis of human success, a group of people where I, as a part of the network, can give away resources without losing them. That's a paradox. Because when I have excess of resources, I can give them, I can share them to other one, others who need them, and later on, when I'm in need, I will get them back. That's a short de description of networks. Back then, 200,000 years ago, this was about survival. Today, networking is about something com completely different. It, it's about power, influence, opportunities, lots of things. But it's driven by the same psychological rules, the same psychological mechanisms. And that's interesting. And in fact, there are three basic principles that need to be filled to have a well-functioning network. But before we go into them, I would like to do a small exercise with you. It's a game. And it involves that you are 
uh, you need to try to get as many points as possible as an individual. And you need to close your eyes, when I say you should close your eyes, and you need to make a choice whether to raise your hand or not. And you will be given points based on the following. You can open your eyes now, it's not yet. I'll tell you when you can close your eyes. If you raise your hand and you are the only single one in this room doing it, you will get five points. If you raise your hand and someone else also raises their hand, you will get one minus one point. If you leave your hand down and someone else raises their hand, you will get minus five points. But if you all leave your hands down, you will get plus one point. You get the idea? Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Make a decision, raise your hand or not, now. Open your eyes and look. Okay, as you can see, some of you raised your hands, others didn't. That means that if you raised your hand, you lose one point. Keep track of it, we're going to do it one more time. If you, let, if you had your hand down, all of you who didn't raise your hand, you lost five points. Okay, once again, close your eyes. Make a choice and raise or not raise your hand. Open your eyes and it's the same result. Okay. The goal of this was quite simple. You were to gain points, not lose them. Why weren't you able to gain points? Anyone? You didn't work as a team, exactly. Because in this game, it's a, it's a, it's a, a variant of the prisoner's dilemma. And it's if you can trust all the others, if you can be sure and trust the others that they will back you up and no one will raise their hand, then the rational solution is to leave your hand down. However, if you think that there is one bugger who wants to exploit the system, then it's rational to raise your hand. To, to minimize the loss. And this leads us to the first basic principle that needs to be filled to have a well-functioning network. There's, the need, there, there's a need for trust. You need to have a psychological contract that we are in this together. We are a team and we are like the three musketeers, one for all, all for one. That's the first basic principle of a well-functioning network. The second one is in the nature of networks, that there, is, that there has to be some sort of um, economical balance, sharing of services, because when I have access, I can share, and when I'm in need, I can get help from others. In the Stone Age, if I kill a mammoth, I can give you others meat, eight tons, should be enough for all of you. And when you kill a mammoth, you can share with me. Today it's favors so, or other things in the networks of today. And the good thing that supports this is that we're programmed to do it. Again, psychologically, genetically programmed to do it. We have a strong demand as human beings to return favors. It's called the reciprocity principle. If I give you something, you will feel like you will feel obliged to give me something back. Some of you raised your hands when I asked you if you gave money to beggars. Why? From a rational, genetical perspective, it's totally irrational. <laughs> but it makes us feel good, and this is a mechanism that we have developed because it helps us work as a team. So through the e egoism of our genes, we have developed alt altruism, which is great because that, then we can work together. And the final point, which is quite obvious when you know the two first ones, is that there need to be some sort of control. We need in our network to be able to know that we don't let in the ones that will exploit the system, and we need to be able to kick out the ones that are exploiting the system, somehow. In formal networks like the Freemasoners, you have rules. To be able to enter Freemasoners, you have to be a male, you have to be 21 years old or, or older, you have to believe in a higher deity, you have to 
be uh, <laughs> prove that you are of good character, someone needs to vouch for you, and you have to know, prove that you have insights into the Freemasonry. So there are s it's a set of rules to ensure that the ones entering the network adhere to the code, the contract. Um, so, having these uh, three foundational rules of networking in the back of, my, back of your head, I would like to share with you five choices you can make every day, or almost every day, to build a good personal network. Because the rules are the same for a personal network, even though it's not formalized, it's not like you get a badge or something that you're in my personal network, but the rules are more or less the same. And first of all, network is not about getting, it's about giving. You can make a choice to share information and opportunities with the people you have around you. It's a choice you make every day. You can make a choice to train yourself to think, instead of thinking, this is not relevant for me. You can think, who could this be interesting for? and share that knowledge to someone. And the interesting part, given the reciprocity, if I give you something, you feel obliged to give me back. If you give me something, I feel obliged to give you back. So I, you will pull me into your network by, doing, by helping me, by giving. And that's an interesting part. Secondly, you have the choice every day to exercise your network. You have the choice to maintain contact with the people you know. And it's not as hard as it sounds. When you walk to the bus, when you're on the bus, when you're in the car, to, <laughs> on your way back home, whenever you have spare time, normally you go browse the internet or maybe read a book or something, but you have the choice. You can pick up the phone. You can pick up your uh, iPad and text someone on Facebook saying, hey, I thought about you when I saw this. And we as human beings, we have a strong need for affi affiliation. So the, the pure fact that you show me that you've been thinking about me, it makes me feel good. And that's, that's something you give me, which I appreciate. And that's a choice you can make every day. You also have the choice of connecting others. One of the most beautiful things I experience in my day-to-day -day life is when I know someone well and I like them, and I know someone else that I like, and in some setting they meet, but they don't know each other. I'm feeling that I'm witnessing something great. Wow, this is so cool, seeing these two together. And the bigger network you have, the more opportunities you can see, because in the, in the mass around you, in the people you know, there are always someone who needs help, and there are always someone who can help. So if you connect these two people, you will help both of them, and they will appreciate the help that you give them. And with regards to control in the network, you are the manager of your own network. You can choose yourself who you want to spend time with. If I give to someone, if I invite someone for dinner many times and they say no, obviously, they are not interested in maintaining contact. And it's my choice to let go. It's your choice. You can manage whoever you want to talk to. And finally, I, uh, seven years ago, approximately, I, I had a new neighbor. The neighbors above us moved out and someone else moved in. We met them briefly, we had a dinner together, and we, I felt that there was a good connection with one of the guys, uh, with a husband and a couple. And not so long after, a couple of days after, we were celebrating our 30th birthday, birthday, my wife and me. And we were talking about how nice we thought these two neighbors were. And we didn't, uh, we talked about, can, can we invite them for our birthday party? We, we met them once, invite them to the full family party with all the big family and everyone we know. It is, a bit outside of what you socially normally do. We invited them, and we've maintained contact. And today, Andreas, 
uh, which is the guy, is my colleague in the company I'm working with today. And he means a lot to me. You have a choice every day to invite people. You mentioned curiosity as an important factor. I totally agree. Be curious on people, and the ones that you feel are interesting, you can invite them in if you want to. Don't be afraid to break some social norms. Talk with people on the bus. Talk with them, with them in the elevator. That's the way to invite in. If you now just take a brief look at someone next to you that you don't know, you can never know it's if this person sitting next to you will be someone very important for you in seven years. You can never know. It's your choice if you want to find out. Thank you.